In order for the body to function properly, it needs a way to get rid of toxins and other waste materials. That's where the kidneys come in. Their main function is to filter the blood and remove any unwanted substances from the body. Now, the first step in blood filtration happens at the glomerulus, a tiny bed of capillaries surrounded by the Bowman's capsule. The glomerular filtration barrier is made up of three layers, and together they separate the blood inside the glomerular capillaries from the fluid inside the Bowman's capsule. They work like a sieve, allowing water and some solutes in the plasma, like sodium, to pass into the Bowman space, while keeping negatively charged particles, like proteins, or large particles, like red blood cells, in the blood. The filtered fluid, now called pre-urine, leaves the Bowman space and travels through the nephron. The nephron is the basic unit of the kidney, and is essentially one long tube bent into a U-shape. Different sections of this tube either reabsorb substances back into the systemic circulation, or actively secrete them into the nephron to be excreted in the urine. Renal clearance of a substance refers to how quickly a particular substance is removed from the plasma by the kidney and excreted in the urine. So, something with a high renal clearance means that it will quickly be removed from the blood, and vice versa. There's a formula to calculate renal clearance for some substance X. In this formula, C stands for the renal clearance, which is the volume of blood plasma that's cleared of that substance over time in minutes. C equals the concentration of the substance in the urine, or Ux, multiplied by the urine flow rate, or V dot, which is the amount of urine excreted over time in minutes. And all of that is divided by the plasma concentration of the substance, which is Px. So, if the urine concentration is high, but the plasma concentration is low, then that must mean that a lot of the substance was removed from the blood, leading to a high renal clearance. As a general rule, small, uncharged substances like inulin, which is a small, inert polysaccharide molecule, have a relatively easy time passing through the glomerulus. As an example, let's say that in a 24-hour period, a man has 2 litres of urine, and that his plasma sodium concentration is 145 milliequivalents per litre, whereas his urine sodium concentration is 190 milliequivalents per litre. Using this information, let's calculate his renal clearance for sodium. First, we need to calculate his urine flow rate, which is the urine volume divided by the time. So that's 2,000 millilitres, divided by 24 hours, which is 1,440 minutes, which equals 1.39 millilitres per minute. Since urine concentration is 190 milliequivalents per litre, we multiply that by 1.39 millilitres per minute, and divide that by the plasma concentration, which is 145 milliequivalents per litre. So this equals 1.43 millilitres per minute, meaning that 1.43 millilitres of plasma is cleared of sodium per minute. So, we know how much plasma is being cleared of sodium per minute by the kidneys, but we don't know if any of the sodium is being reabsorbed or secreted into the urine by the nephrons. This is because clearance is the sum of all the reabsorption and secretion that occurs for a substance. And in order to tease out exactly how much reabsorption and secretion is occurring, we need to compare it to inulin. Inulin is a polysaccharide that is produced by plants. It's the one substance that's freely filtered and not actively secreted or reabsorbed. We know this because the filtered fraction, which is how much fluid is reaching the kidneys and passes into the renal tubules, is the same for inulin as it is for plasma. So we can use it to get an accurate estimation of how much fluid is filtered from the renal glomerular capillaries into the filtrate, also known as the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. When we compare the clearance of substance X to inulin, we get something called the clearance ratio. This can be calculated as the clearance of substance X divided by the clearance of inulin. If the ratio is equal to 1, then substance X is the same as inulin, and must also be freely filtered and not actively secreted. If the ratio is greater than 1, the clearance of substance X must be greater than inulin, and that means that it must be freely filtered and also actively secreted by the kidneys. If the ratio is less than 1, the clearance of substance X must be less than inulin, and that means that it must not be freely filtered, like with albumin, or it may be freely filtered but then some of it may be getting reabsorbed by the kidneys, like with glucose. 
So let's continue with that earlier scenario and assume that we gave that patient an infusion of inulin over two hours. Let's suppose that the urine concentration of inulin is 140 mg per milliliter and that the plasma concentration of inulin is 1 mg per milliliter. We can use the same urine flow rate as before, which was 1.39 milliliters per minute. Since the urine concentration is 140 mg per milliliter, we multiply that by 1.39 milliliters per minute and divide by the plasma concentration, which is 1 mg per milliliter. This equals 194.6 milliliters per minute, so that means that 194.6 milliliters of plasma is cleared of inulin per minute. Now we can calculate the clearance ratio for sodium, which is 1.43 milliliters per minute divided by 194.6 milliliters per minute, which equals 0.007. Now, 0.007 is far less than 1, so that tells us that very little sodium is excreted into the urine. Interestingly, since sodium is freely filtered, it must be extensively reabsorbed by the nephron to have such a low clearance. This clearance ratio means that less than 1% of filtered sodium is excreted in the urine, whereas the other 99% is reabsorbed. So now that we know how to find the clearance rate of a solute, let's look at the clearance rate of just water, called free water clearance. This tells us if water is being reabsorbed or secreted by the kidneys. Basically, anything that's happening after water is filtered from the Bowman space. And that's helpful because it tells us if there's a problem with the distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts, which have protein channels called aquaporin that only reabsorb water. These channels are activated by antidiuretic hormone, which is secreted from the pituitary gland. So free water clearance, or CH2O, is calculated by this equation. So free water clearance is the urine flow rate, or V dot, minus the osmolar clearance, or COSM, and conversely, urine flow rate is the free water clearance plus the osmolar clearance. We can find COSM by multiplying urine osmolarity, UOSM, with urine flow rate, V dot, and dividing by the plasma osmolarity, POSM. This is similar to the equation we used to find the clearance of a solute, except now we include all of the solutes. Let's work through a sample problem to make this concrete. Let's say that a woman has a urine flow rate of 1.5 millilitres per minute, a urine osmolarity of 130 milliosmoles per litre, and a plasma osmolarity of 280 milliosmoles per litre. What would her free water clearance be? So, plugging in the numbers, we get that the urine flow rate is 1.5 millilitres per minute, and the osmolar clearance can be calculated by multiplying 130 milliosmoles per litre by 1.5 millilitres per minute and divided by 280 milliosmoles per litre, which gives us 0.7 millilitres per minute. And this means that 0.7 millilitres of plasma is cleared of all the solutes found in the urine every minute by the kidneys. To calculate the free water clearance, we take 1.5 millilitres per minute minus 0.7 millilitres per minute which equals 0.8 millilitres per minute. This means that 0.8 millilitres of plasma is cleared of solute free water per minute. If the free water clearance value is positive, this means that the free water is being secreted and the urine is hypoosmolar compared to the plasma, meaning that the urine is less concentrated. This could happen if we drink a lot of water and our body wants to get rid of some of it, or if we're releasing an inappropriate amount of ADH. If the value was negative, this means that the free water is being reabsorbed and the urine is hyperosmolar compared to plasma, meaning that the urine is more concentrated. This could happen if we're dehydrated, or if the kidneys aren't responding to ADH. OK, so as a quick recap, renal clearance is the rate at which a certain substance is removed from the plasma by the kidneys. By comparing this rate to the clearance rate of inulin, which is freely filtered and not secreted, we can get an idea of if the substance is secreted, reabsorbed or poorly filtered. Free water, or pure water clearance, can be similarly calculated by taking the rate of urine flow and subtracting the rate of solute clearance to get the rate that pure water is filtered out of the plasma and excreted by the kidneys.